everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week we are going to continue on with Gunny Saxoween, aka this project right here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Gunny Saxoween, then you probably haven't seen my first video, so I will link that down below. But basically, I am making a dress as part of a costume collaboration where we are doing Gunny Sax style dresses. Gunny Sax was a popular brand kind of design style in the 70s and 80s, and we we're doing those dresses in cotton prints that are Halloween prints. So this is the one that I have been working on. Again, check out part one down below in the description. And from the end of the last video, we left off on I need to do the sleeve mock-up, or at least try the sleeve mock-up since I have actually already cut it out. I just need to attach it. And also I was trying to decide between the trim options. I'm still a little bit wibbly on this, but I'm pretty sure that I am leaning towards the velvet trim, where I will have two strips of the velvet here, and then I will also have the velvet around the waist, and I'm pretty sure I'll be using that same velvet down at the top of the ruffle and also on the sleeve cuffs and potentially around the neckline, so kind of all over. Luckily, it was a 25-yard spool of velvet trim, so I should have plenty. My one thing is, I mean, I do really like this trim. I just feel like putting it all over is going to be a little much, and also I don't have enough of this one to put it all over, so. So I am pretty sure I am sticking with the velvet trim. Honestly, she looks quite nice with the 1890s bodice that is still living on my dress form. I don't know why. I should just hang it up and put it in the closet, but it's still living on my dress form. But that's where we are at. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to try out that sleeve mock-up. This is what it looks like currently. I have run gathering stitches around the hem here and also around the top of the sleeve, but it is pretty much a straight sleeve. I talked about this more in the last video. I'm going to pull up these gathering stitches so that it will fit the arm side, and I am going to pull these ones up so that it will fit my wrist, and then there will be a little cuff that these are gathered into at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead, sew this on and attach it. But while I'm doing that, let's go over to sponsor Rebecca for a little word from our sponsor. Thank you, Sewing Rebecca. And thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. I've talked about Skillshare a few different times on this channel, but in case you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. On Skillshare, you can find thousands of inspiring classes on topics ranging from basic sewing skills to web design, photography to music, and so many more. I've been trying to be better about planning and organization lately, and I'm one of those old-fashioned people who finds it easier to keep track of things when they're physically written down instead of on a computer or a phone. So a couple of months ago, I bought a nice planner, but I haven't been utilizing it to its fullest potential, so I was really pleased when I stumbled across the class Finding Planner Peace, taught by Cindy Gwentert Baldo. In this class, she talks about how different people need different kinds of planners, and once you've chosen your planner, how to organize what needs to go into it so that it best works for you. I'm excited to continue on my new planner journey now. One of the many nice things about Skillshare is that the classes are really meant for your schedule. Like Cindy's class, many of the classes are under an hour, and you can pause, rewind, or rewatch classes as often as you like. And the great news is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your creativity and unlock your limitless creative potential. And now, on to more sewing! Oh my gosh, you guys, this sleeve is ridiculous. It is way too puffy. Look at this. I feel like I'm trying to make like a poet shirt or something like that. It's just like, what even is this? This is so not remotely practical, which is kind of too bad because I feel like I like the gathering at the top. So that means I guess I just have to figure out how to narrow it out the rest of the way down. I mean, that's easy. Just curve it in like a normal sleeve. Um, yeah, which I'm going to do because this is not what I was going for. 
Sleeve take two is so much better. I think it's still honestly a little bit long and a little bit full, especially down here. Now what I did wind up doing was I had, when I went and took stuff off, I belled out this a little bit. So I'm going to not do that and keep the wrist about the same width as it is around here. It's probably only about an inch difference, but I think that makes a big difference. And I also might go ahead. I don't know if I want to cut any more length off or not. If I do, it's going to be like half an inch, like not very much. And I'm tempted to not do that until after I cut it out and actually see what it looks like when I have a zipper on and stuff like that, when I can actually put this on all the way instead of having this open in the back. But it's definitely a lot closer. I might want even a little bit narrower through here. I don't know. But again, I think that would be on the final that I'll decide that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and narrow this bit down here and then cut out, I'll try it one more time, cut out the actual and then make those other decisions. But this is so much better. I had also, by the way, taken three inches off of the length and a lot off of the width. So this is what I cut off. This was on the length and this was the width of the sleeve. So you can see this was the armpit and you can see where I tapered it out at the wrist. I'm going to make it so this just is straight all the way down, taking that off. So let's make those little tweaks and try again. Better. It's still not uh, maybe ideal. Again, I think it's still a little too wide and maybe a little too long, but I'm gonna make those final tweaks on the actual sleeve, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to line. I hadn't really decided yet, so I'll have to make that decision, obviously, while I'm cutting it before I try and slow it together. But then I'll make those final tweaks, I think, once I do have this attached to the skirt and have the zipper in. So I'm gonna go cut this out in the print fabric and see what I decide. Well, unfortunately, it looks like my calculations were correct because this is how much of that eight yard piece I have left. And I still have one more sleeve to cut out, which is obviously a lot longer than this, what, half a yard right here. So I guess I am cutting into that second piece of yardage, which means that I will also wind up having the excess for sale at the end of this project. So I will try to remember to mention at the end of this video how much is left. And I don't know if I'll put it on Etsy or maybe I'll sell it through Instagram or what. But yeah, I will have this fabric for sale afterwards. So if you want any of it, let me know. So I have my sleeves cut out and ready to be assembled, but I realized that I really should be putting the trim and finishing on the bodice before I do the sleeves and definitely before I do the skirt, AKA before I do the zipper. So that is what I've been doing now. I have already sewn on these first strips and this strip, but you might notice there's something going on here. So that is not right. And it's weirdly doing this like at an angle. I don't know how much this comes across on the video, but it's not like it's just buckling up. It's literally buckling this way. So I don't know why that's doing that. It's, you know, driving me crazy. I am also worried that I did this neckline way too high. Like I kind of wish that it was way lower. So that's not great. And then the other part is that I feel like with adding this second strip, which was my plan, that all of a sudden it gets really kind of wide. And I am I followed the seams right here. So it goes all the way along the neckline and then I followed the seam right here on the inside, I guess. So the seam is right there. And I feel like I should have tapered it in more like this, like going a across the seam and that maybe that would have given me a better look. But of course I've already sewn it down on both sides. So that would mean unpicking it all and re-sewing it back on. Uh, but I do feel like I think it, it has to be done because otherwise this just seems so wide to add the second one. And I'm pretty sure I still want to add the second one. I don't know. I mean, there is the option, I guess, of just doing one, but I'm not sure that I love that. So it's bedtime anyway. So I think that I'm going to put this on the form, deliberate about it overnight. I will for sure have to fix this. And probably while I'm fixing it, I will cut down this middle point a little bit. But yeah, that is just not 
not at all right. So that's going to be obnoxious because frankly, to fix it properly, I have to undo the velvet ribbon here anyway because it's on the seam allowances. I can't access the seam. So great. Just love it. Except not at all. <sighs> oh, yeah. Did I mention that I was hoping to finish this tomorrow? <laughs> I know, right? Okay, you know me. I can't just like go to bed and leave it. So I didn't. I ripped off the trim on this side over here from here down. And I also took off the trim on here and cut it down to where I had wanted to because of course it's a point. So I do have to cut a slit. I haven't cut away the excess yet. I just cut a slit to about a half inch from where I wanted it just to like try it. And then I have also shoved over gosh, I think it's like three quarters of an inch on this side because actually cutting the slit down and making it lower, I just pinned this trim in place, but it made the excess up here even more exacerbated. And so I opened this seam to the bust point pretty much, or it should go to the bust point, and slid it over until it was centered here and fitting here. And then I pinned this in place just up here and down below, which is why it was slipping, and made it so that up here it is the left side on the seam down here it is the right side on the seam so it crosses the seam as it goes but because it doesn't go any farther than that I'm not going to like see the seam floating in between the two I think this is the right direction to go I haven't yet tried to put a second line of trim along this but I mean everything is just haphazardly pinned in place or held in place or whatever but yeah I think think that's better. I have to still look at just like how wide it looks at the waist and I haven't done anything to this side yet other than up here and I haven't pinned it over yet. It's just floofing there. So I had some work to do but I think we are on the right track. Both sides have now been repinned just kind of roughly because I only opened the seam up to here so I do need to actually like smooth over the bust point and figure out the shaping with that but the trim has been repinned and I think that this angle is gonna work I mean obviously I haven't pinned on a second strip here but I'm liking what's going on here so I think that this is gonna work so I mean it's unfortunate that a lot of the work that I did this evening I have wound up having to redo but at least I have a game plan for going forward tomorrow and that's where I'm gonna leave it so good night all right, trim is on and I did have to correct this one a little bit right when I had first put it on. It just like was wibbling a little. So trim is on. It's corrected. I think they look even, I hope. And I do have the two rows, both of those on all the way around. So that is great. I've also made a decision on the belt the little piece, little triangular piece that'll go here. And I think I'm going to actually do it as a separate piece. I'm still hoping that I can do that corduroy bodice as well, though I did also realize that I have two corduroy bodices, one of which is an underbust with straps like this, and one of which is just like a waist cincher type. But with this one, I wanted it to be an overbust. I don't know. We'll see if I get to that. But because of the idea of having that bodice that I could wear with this, I was thinking like if I have the belt piece underneath the bodice, it's just going to be bulky around the waist because of the velvet ribbon on the edge of the belt and the seam finishings and you know all that sort of stuff. So if I actually like top stitch it, sew it on to here, it, that bulk is always going to be there. Whereas I could do it as a completely separate piece that I could wear with the outfit and it will cover the seam of the skirt or I could not wear it with the outfit and wear the corduroy bodice instead. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it as a separate belt that will then probably hook and bar in the back. Though the idea of like making cute ties in the back is really appealing also. Like having it finished with a big, I don't know, satin bow or something like that. That's a really appealing idea. So might do it that way. Haven't decided that part yet, but I have decided that it's gonna be a separate piece. So now that the trimming is all done on the bodice because the belt is the only other thing with trimming. I can go ahead and put the sleeves on. Sleeves are currently just flat, which means I'm going to seam them up, run the gathers on the top and the bottom. They do also need cuffs, but since I'm still not positive if they're too long or too wide, I'm going to wait until they're attached to the bodice to determine 
the cuff. So for now, let's get these on here. Sleeves are on and honestly, I think I'm happy with them. Like they're good amount of poofy, a good amount of length. If anything, I feel like I, if I had gone any shorter, I'd be in trouble. So I think I'm ready to just like stick cuffs on them and call it good. But yeah, this feels, it feels appropriate for a gunny sack dress. So I think I'm in a good place after dinner and after going to decorate my house and walk line, I'm going to come back and uh, stick some cuffs on these guys. So for the cuffs, I determined that I wanted them 10 and a quarter inches total, including seam allowance, because the space to get my hand through is just a little bit less than nine and a quarter inches. So I went with nine and a quarter inches around, which would be a little wide on my wrist, but like I'd rather not have to deal with a button or anything like that. So 10 and a quarter inch total, and then they're five inches wide, and that is going to fold down and minus the seam allowance will be two inches. So I think, I mean, two inches is a lot less than my inspiration image, but I feel like two inches is still a really sufficient cuff and it will also leave me with enough room to do two rows of the velvet ribbon. Now I am not planning on lining this cuff at all. Hopefully that's not a mistake. I'm not interfacing it or anything like that either because the velvet ribbon is quite stiff and so I just feel like having interfacing in here would be really overkill because I'm already kind of like quilting it with velvet ribbon because there will be four lines of stitching to hold down two rows of velvet ribbon. So hopefully that's all the stiffness that I need. And I'm going to go ahead and put these together. I'm going to put the velvet ribbon on after I attach these to the sleeve. And I'm hoping that that's not like the wrong decision. I mean, it would be easier to put it on flat, probably, honestly, but then I have to worry about like knowing where it goes before I actually put the cuff together and I don't want to do that. I want to see what it looks like once the cuff is on the sleeve and then determine like how spaced those velvet ribbons should be. So I am going to go ahead and start assembling this. Sleeves are done. That means that the bodice is done other than, you know, the fact that it's not attached to the skirt and doesn't have a zipper up the back. But yeah, we're getting close. We're almost there. So I am going to go ahead and I think I'm gonna go ahead and attach the bodice to the skirt now. The skirt doesn't have the trim around the top of the ruffle yet, but I don't really feel like the bodice has that much bulk to add compared to what the skirt is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the skirt. That way I can put the zipper in and then I'll worry about that trim and then I'll worry about that belt. Hopefully all of which will get done in this video, but of course it's after 10 p.m. and tomorrow my parents get here, so. I need to get everything done as much as I can before tomorrow night when they arrive. The bodice is attached to the skirt and I know that I'm totally off frame here, but I kind of love it. I mean, right now it's like a lot of just black fabric, but the skirt is so full. I haven't tried spinning yet, but I have a feeling that this is going to spin amazingly. The ruffle just makes it so full and I am kind of loving this. I'm excited to see what it will look like with the belt part on here too, but otherwise I need the belt, I need the trim on the top of the ruffle, and I need the zipper, and then I mean I would like to make that corduroy bodice for it too, but I'm almost starting to wonder if like the corduroy bodice is going to cover up all the fun detail stuff, so I'm starting to wonder if I actually even want that. I don't know, because I'm really liking it as it is. It's so fluffy and ruffly and I just feel like a little girl but also like a witch because of the fabric and I am totally on board with that. So I might even stay up late and play with trim down here on the bottom. I don't want to set the zipper tonight. I know that's more focus and attention than I should be spending at like, I don't know, probably 1045 or something like that. But this is cute. So as I mentioned, I decided to play around with some trims, even though I should be going to bed. And one of the ribbon trims that came that was 5 eighths inches really, I think, is an identical or it's at least a super close match to the 3 eighths inch that I've been using. And it was $10 for, I don't even know how much, at least 10 to 20 yards. And I think instead of returning it, I'm going to 
keep it because I really, really like the wide width down here on the ruffle. You can maybe see I've got the wide width on this side and then I've got the narrow width over here just pinned in place. And I know that obviously when I'm holding it up like this, it doesn't give the same effect as me just like wearing it. But the weight of the wide width versus the narrow width, it's huge. Like I think I would need two of the narrow width and I don't know that I want to put that much effort into it because that's twice as much work. So yeah, I might play with how two of the narrow width looks, but it might be worth the $10 for me to go with the wide. So since I couldn't decide about the one strip versus two strips on the skirt, I went and posted to my patrons and asked my patrons as well as my friends on Facebook what they thought that I should do. And it was resoundingly two strips of the narrow, like resounding, as in, I don't know, probably 50 people said go with two strips of the narrow and three people said go with one strip of the wide. Yeah, so I guess I'm going with two strips of the narrow. So I better get started sewing all that on. So I'm working on the belt right now and I have cut it out in canvas as well as the witchy fabric. And in the front, I'm not doing it in the back and hopefully I don't regret that, but in the front I am putting some boning channels in. I've got five of them. You can see the white marking and then I've already done the bias in the center. And I'm just creating little narrow bias tape channels and I'm going to insert little bones in there. I think I'm going to put these on the inside or I guess the out, the outer portion of the inside of the belt as in like this here so that the bones face me as opposed to being more textured through the thin cotton. So yeah, I'm going to continue doing this right now. And then once those bones are in, then I'm going to do the side seams on each, the outer cotton and the canvas. And then I'm going to put it all together and turn it right side out. And hopefully those bones won't all get in the way while I'm turning it right side out. I think this is the best way to do it. I didn't do a mock-up first either. And I'm wearing a corset right now, so I can't even like try it on unless I take the corset off. So hopefully this all works. The belt is now done. After I turned it right side out, I put the gold ribbon on the edges and I skipped all of the boning channels, so I had to start and stop every time I hit a boning channel. I don't love how it looks on the form, so I really hope that it looks better when I'm wearing everything. I mean, she is super short-waisted, so I'm hoping that that is why it doesn't look right. But yeah, it just looks really boxy on here. So again, hopefully it'll look better when I do it. But I am going to finish up the trim on the skirt, because I actually haven't done that. I decided to make the belt first instead, and do the zipper. And I may or may not add the lace. I had kind of forgotten about the lace and I think I like how it looks without the lace. So I don't know that I'm gonna add that, but that is it. So trim on the skirt. So I know that it's really like totally out of frame right now, but the trim on the skirt is done. It took for freaking ever like I thought it was going to. And obviously belt is done too. So at this point, all it needs is the zipper up the back and the hooks and eyes or hooks and bars closure on the belt, which I am planning to do tomorrow morning and hopefully get to wear this tomorrow. We'll see how it goes.
And that is this dress done, or at least kind of done. I have to admit that for today I cheated. I haven't actually put the zipper in this yet, but I didn't have time to do it this morning before we went to go take the pictures. So I actually just sewed up the back of the dress. It's just a solid seam. I'm tempted to leave it that way because honestly it goes off and on over my head just fine. There's enough room around the neck. The only thing is that it would mess up my hair to get it on and off that way. So. I'm torn. I may or may not add the zipper. I mean, I did buy it. So I don't know. I might add the invisible zipper in the back, but otherwise it's worked quite well. I did notice while I've been putting it on and off for fitting things like the trim and all that, that there is actually excess room in the back. So there is probably at least an inch seam allowance up at the top, if not an inch and a quarter. And even at the waist, there's about, I think, three quarters of an inch seam allowance, somewhere between five eighths and three quarters, as opposed to the half inch. And honestly, like it could be a little bit more too. So there's definitely some excess back there, which I may or may not to take out if I go to do the zipper I might just like surge off that excess but overall I love the dress I honestly can't decide if I like it better with the belt or without the belt and my parents are divided my dad loves the belt my mom does not love the belt and I'm love it both ways so yeah totally torn on that but I love the dress I wore it out today we went out on the walk where you saw all of the footage from and then we also just went exploring for a little bit and it's so comfortable like seriously this dress is just so freaking comfortable so super super happy with it I have a feeling I'll be wearing this more than just during spooky season because it's super cute and I feel like until you get up close you don't know that it's spooky symbols all over my dress. I am also tempted, I heard that there is going to be a gunny sex collaboration for Christmas, so I might do another one of these types of dresses come Christmas. We'll see what my schedule holds. But overall, again, super, super happy with the outcome of this project. The skirt is just so full. Love it. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. <laughs> If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron Sharon and a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video Skillshare. Again check out the link down below in the description for your free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!